and this is a beautiful dandelion plant. We have a lot of them and we love them because they penetrate the soil and make it softer and they're great edible, great medicinal. So here we go. Growing in here in my garlic bed um, is tasty, tasty dandelion leaves. And dandelions grow all over my yard, um, all throughout the pasture. But the ones that happen to grow here in this bed get pretty huge. And they are tender. <laughs> yep. So I always see them, you know, tiny under this massive dandelion plant. And um, they're, they're not very bitter, at least when they grow here in all this shade and, and good soil. And I just eat them up. So when they're big ones like that, they're, they're, they taste better. Mm. It's when they're tiny, like you see sometimes in some folks' lawn. They can be. I go around sampling a lot. My hypothesis is that the dandelions that are toothier, more jagged, are a little more bitter than the ones that are rounded. So you can experiment. They're all good. My taste for bitter greens has increased over the years. I didn't used to be able to just grab a dandelion leaf and eat it, but now I relish it. So, dandelion. It's it's one of those plants that people hate. You know, it's to, but I think that that's the main reason for that is our obsession with uniform, tidy lawns that only have grass in them. Because I mean, it's got a beautiful yellow flower. It's got a root with great medicinal properties, and it can also be used as a substitute for coffees made into a tea when it's roasted, that sort of thing. The young leaves are really delicious in salad. It's, it's a good mineral accumulator, so the young leaves have, have excellent nutrition in them. The reason you see them in your lawns is because the soil has been compacted, and the dandelion has this taproot that just punches a big hole into the ground, and it's there and instead of you having to aerate the soil and loosen it up, the dandelions are doing that for you. So it's another one of those cases of nature seeing the problem, compacted soil, and saying, what have I got? What have, oh, dandelions, here we go. They're going to go right in and fix that problem. So when we're pulling dandelions, we're actually setting back that process of loosening up and aerating our soil and bringing minerals up to the surface so that the, the other plants will grow better. The dandelion is, is tap-rooted, so it's acting as a dynamic accumulator, and it's naturally competing with this grass, which is very fibrously rooted, very surface-rooted. The grass is going to be competing for nutrients much more with um, these viburnums. So, you know, for me, it's anything but grass. Um, that's my battle. You know, if I'm going to hate something here, it's going to be grass because it's the most competitive with my plants. And the plants I do want to promote are dynamic accumulators, tap-rooted plants, which the dandelion is. Alright, and and so palatability? Obviously mm. they must be edible or you wouldn't mm. put them in your mouth. Very edible. What's that in your mouth? Man, what are you what are you eating? Dandelion. Don't Why would... I don't like eating the stem. Yeah, and look at this dandelion. Now that's, yeah. that's an impressive dandelion. See another sign of her green thumb? That's really big dandelion leaves. That's, that's uh, very healthy. That's good liver medicine. That's good. Yeah, it's one of the best mm -hmm. liver medicine. Mm -hmm. sep it's stor it's Louis Storrell just said, he said, for those people who drink just a little too much and their liver's enlarging, <laughs> this is a really good plant to be taking. <laughs> I always come out here and throw a few things in the, in the lettuce. I mean, in the uh -huh, salad. Right, just very good but salad. It's really yummy. Mm. It Bit has that bitter. Bitter. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Europeans yeah. are much more into bitters in their salad than Americans. <laughs> <laughs> the scientific name for dandelion is Taroxacum officinale, and that means the official remedy for disorders. It's an old world plant that was brought here as a medicine and as a food. You know, So oh. it's, it's got four foods you can actually get out of it the root, the flowers, the leaves and then the little buds before when they're in the crown of the plant before they come up. <laughs> it doesn't want to give it up. <laughs> I like dandelions. I like dandelions. Dandelion seeds. Oh yeah, if you get more dandelions in your yard, that's awesome. 
Not your garden. Yeah. So dandelion, dandelion, which we haven't talked about yet because all these are mowed over and walked on, um, but we could. That's one of the, it's a tap root for one thing. So anything that's a tap root, dandelion, yellow dock, it punches through the hard pan soil and goes down there and gets minerals and important stuff from deep and brings it up. When that plant dies, when that root rots away, all that stuff is available for your shallower stuff, like your lettuce and your tomatoes that don't necessarily have deep, deep root. Um, so to me, a taproot plant is really valuable. They used to grow decon radish and just grow them and just let them die because of what they would create in the soil. They'd punch through and this big fat root would just die and it's a way for the water to get through and the worms come in and eat them. And so yeah, I love dandelion. And if you have too much of dandelion, just eat them. Flower. The flower, the leaves, the root. Make the coffee. The whole thing. Or I just, I'll like, if I have a young dandelion plant, I'll just pull the whole thing, wash it off real good, chop it up and put it in a tea. Do the French press. The full plant with the leaf and the root and the flower is amazing tea. Hmm. So yeah, I don't think you can have too much dandelion. Well, you roast it for coffee. Isn't there a way to take the mm -hmm. roots and roast it? And yeah, you take the young roots and you dry them out and wash them. Get the dirt off, um, dry them out, and roast them at a low temperature in your oven, and chop them up or grind them up and make. Bas you're basically still making tea. I mean, it's not coffee. It is dandelion root. You know, it doesn't taste like coffee. It tastes like kind of burnt roots. <laughs> this guy's doing very well here on the edge of the street and uh, gravel. So they say dandelion got his name because his leaves are deeply notched like the tooth of the lion. You also can see on this one, he's got almost like, almost like little white crystals going on to really get deep down in there. And one way to tell dandelion from anybody else is that there's no stem. Like the leaf comes straight out from the center. When the flower comes out, there's gonna be that straw that you, everybody sees and then the flower. But there's no like growing up to a stem and then a flower or anything like that. It all comes directly from the base. All he just needs is one seed and he's going to punch right through this hard gravel. I mean, somebody came by with a machine and made this gravel. That dandelion is just going to go right through and punch that through. So the water, instead of running along pavement, running along here, some of that water is going to come right up here and go into the actual earth because of that dandelion plant. And hopefully he'll make flowers and do more and people will learn that dandelions are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cheated. You took a shortcut. So why spend a lot of money to dump a lot of lime on your land when you could have nature's dynamic accumulators bringing calcium right to the surface for nothing? <sighs> so, these are Löwenzahn Samen. When they are now here, auf die neue Ding auftrifft. <lacht> Dann hat man gleich auch schon den Löwenzahnsalat vor der Haustür, vor der Küche. <lacht> so einfach geht das. I love dandelions. They are the very first bee food of the season. And that, like when the dandelions bloom, it, it's officially the start of bee season. So all these little dandelion seeds. I want them all over my yard. Every single one of them. Go make plenty of dandelions. <laughs> so dandelions make the perfect spring tonic because when we come out of winter and we haven't had many green things, we've been eating out of our root cellars and things that we've canned for the winter. One of our first greens that's full of vitamin A in fact, more than full, dandelions are one of the greens year-round that has more vitamin A than anything else. Vitamin C, a lot of the micronutrients like iron, and also, excitingly enough, for those of us who are uh, vegetarians and vegans, lots of B vitamins, including a large amount of B6. So B6, one of the vitamins that is calming, so a calming spring tonic. And what I think is kind of neat is that these greens have been implicated in 
curing, or at least helping to cure, many of the diseases that plague humanity at this point and are probably related to the toxins that we put into our environment. So a cleansing tonic that has been really good for cancer and particularly things like uh, uh, breast cancer. So I eat my greens every day. Dandelion, Terexicum officinale. And um, as we're making this video, it's January, so it's an ideal time to eat it for the greens. Uh, later in the year, it gets really bitter. So, um, and if it's too bitter for your taste, what you can also do is uh, take off this middle vein and just eat the green part. It's kind of a little work, but depending on how you do it, you can do it faster. So, on the bitter side, but it would be good mixed with other stuff. And if I put this in my mouth right now, it's like going to be much more bitter. And this will start growing up and having green stuff right after the solstice. You'll just see these little leaves re-emerging from the plant. And uh, it's, it's a winter green around here. Delicious. So another thing you can do if you want to have dandelion greens in your salad and you don't like the taste is to take scissors and actually chop it really, really, really fine and then add some olive oil to it and then add it to the salad. We originally had kind of the same general weed tolerance for dandelions as we do for most weeds where we allow them to live until they're in the way and then we cut them down or kill them off to make room for what we really want. Uh, we would definitely eat the leaves, especially in the spring when they're less bitter and we'd eat the flower tops, which also have a little bit of bitterness. Um, only this year did I learn from Samuel Thayer's newest foraging book, Nature's Garden, I learned that he harvests the entire flower, including the stem, and either makes uh, dandelion spaghetti by cooking up a whole bunch of these things, um, or just eats them raw in salads, or just, he likes to munch them from the bottom up. And I, before that, I'd never seen any definitive references as to whether the stems were edible or not, so I never used them, just the flowers. So it's definitely been a big help knowing that I can use this. So I use these in salads pretty heavily. And then the other huge discovery for us this year is that the roots on the dandelion taste really, really good. When they're raw, they're super bitter, and you read all the time about digging up the roots and roasting them and grinding them up and running them through a, uh, running hot water through to make dandelion coffee. I don't drink coffee, so that never appealed to me. But it turns out that they make an excellent just cooked root vegetable on their own. About 10 minutes of cooking, uh, and they maybe have a very, very slight bitterness, but hardly any. It's just a really nice root crop. So this year we've harvested like seven and a half pounds so far of dandelion roots just from digging them out of different beds when we wanted to plant other stuff. But now I'm appreciating it a lot more and want to encourage more of it and let them actively self-seed to keep having that ongoing root crop. So instead of them just being a uh, low nuisance that we cut down every once in a while to get it out of the way or use as a nutrient accumulator. It's now developed for me into a major, all-purpose, uh, fantastic crop. <laughs> a little better. You know, they fall off at 70% humidity. So oh. Right before the rain happens, the dandelion seeds fall down. Some photo, some all right, what the hell is that? What do you, what is it? <laughs> dandelions is one of my major weeds. Last year I harvested $900 worth of dandelions from my pathways from my weeds. I didn't plant any one of them. I just sort of weeded around them, cut them back a few times, but this fall I'll be digging a lot of dandelion once again. Wait, 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 wait. Now, you've got dandelions growing out here. And did you just say that you sold $900 worth of dandelions? Oh yeah, and I, th this year I'll probably have at least that much again. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about plants that help your garden, homesteading, and permaculture all the time. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> was, that, was that a good video? <laughs>